Paris, sprawling capital of culture and a key city in Europe's political and scientific development. This week, it's home to the world's leading transplantation professionals as they come together for the 49th annual meeting of the EBMT. Things are well underway at the Palais de Congrès de Paris as delegates gather for their first in-person annual meeting since 2019 to share research, network with peers and discuss the latest in HSCT and cellular therapy. We'll take you around the world to hospitals, institutes and companies doing extraordinary work in the field. And you can catch it right here on EBMT TV. Welcome to day three here at the 49th annual meeting of the EBMT. Whether you're here in person or virtually, I hope you've been enjoying all the sessions and hearing from the most influential in the transplantation community. We have plenty of exciting content lined up for you today, so let's get right to it. Today on EBMT TV, we sit down with this year's Van Beckham Award winner Ingvar Floysand to discuss his winning abstract. We'll showcase some of the latest work happening in the field from all over the world, including Amrita Hospital in India, King Hussein Cancer Centre in Jordan and the Maria Letizia Varga Centre in Italy. We hear from trainees about their experiences in the field and what their takeaways are from this year's trainee day. We discuss transplantation in the Ukraine with Bodan Medvedev. Finally, we recap the top highlights from Monday at the 49th annual meeting of the EBMT. First though, it's over to Mohamed Moti, this year's Congress President, to bring us up to speed on what's happening this Tuesday at the 49th annual meeting of the EBMT. Hi, I'm Mohamed Mouti, this year's Congress President in Paris. Welcome to day three of the 49th annual meeting of the EBMT. Between 9 a.m. and 6 p.m., you will get the opportunity to attend four educational sessions, three on GVHD. Also today, we have the Pediatrics Day, the Pharmacist Day, including the Best Abstracts Award session, the Quality Management Day. Also, you will hear two awards, the Jan Chan Luan Award from the Lymphoma Working Party, but also the John Van Rood Award from the Cellular Therapy and Immunobiology Working Party. Hope you'll have a great Tuesday. It's gonna be an exciting day, and I hope you'll enjoy this EBMT annual meeting. Back to you, Stephen. Thanks, Mohammed. Be sure to visit the JC booths in the exhibit hall to learn more about quality management and accreditation in HSCT and cellular therapy. Now let's visit Amrita Hospital in India, recognized as one of the premier hospitals in South Asia with a vision to provide state-of-the-art care and technology at an affordable cost. Ours is a not-for-profit organization with a vision that everyone should have access to high-quality health care irrespective of their financial status. To address the paucity of trained manpower in the region, we have comprehensive residency and fellowship programs for doctors, nurses and paramedics. Being a LMIC, we are conscious of the need to reduce costs of healthcare without compromising the quality. We follow all international protocols and guidelines in patient care. In the near future, we look forward to collaboration and in-house manufacturing of CAR T-cells to make it more affordable. I'm truly humbled and I want to take a moment and thank all the patients and their families who have trusted us with their lives and love. This year's Van Beckham award-winning abstract features exciting new data from a recent phase three trial looking at treatment for graft versus host diseases. Joining me to discuss the work is Ingvar Floysen, author of the winning abstract, as well as Florent Mallard to provide some expert insight. Well, gentlemen, thank you both very much indeed for joining us today. Very much appreciated. 
Thanks for having us. Thank you. Pleasure. Dr. Freusen, can you tell us what are some of the main takeaways from your paper? It's a phase three randomized placebo control trial in a transplant setting, which is um, quite difficult to do. And we've um, randomized 343 patients, a little less than we aimed for because of uh, you know, disruption due to the COVID pandemic. But uh, at the end of the day, um, we got, um, we met our primary endpoint, which means uh, that there is a way of reducing the risk of uh, developing acute um, graft-versus-host disease in the, uh, in the gut. And any risk reduction you can get in these patients would be a you know, probable value for the patients in terms of reducing the morbidity and mortality. So it shows that we still can improve on, on the platforms that we have using the drug that we're using in, in, this, um, in this study. So I, I think that's probably the main takeaway. So how can those improvements be realized? In the study, we used a standard backbone of graft versus disease prophylaxis with a calcineurin inhibitor, which is, you know, uh, cyclosporine or tacrolimus with a short course of methotrexate or, or mycophenolate in some patients. And, and, um, and then we also allowed for, for um, ATG. So we added medlizumab um, or placebo, it was a, was a randomized trial with placebo control, giving one dose prior to transplant, one day prior to transplant, and then after two weeks and then every four weeks, covering like six months, the time where the risk is greatest for developing this disease. So that's how we, um, the study was designed and, and the readout was at, at, at the day 180 and then at a year again. So Dr. Malad, how does, uh, talk us a little bit through some of the, the context here. What, what are some of the ways that, uh, that one can try and prevent um, GBHD and, and how does this work fit into that? Gravacious host disease remains still a big issue because we still have a significant incident of patients that would develop these complications, and in particular the GI GBHD. That is really life threatening and that will impair patients' outcomes with high morbidity in addition to the mortality. And with these new uh, approaches with the vedolizumab that show some very impressive results with these reductions of the incidence of GI acute virus disease, the most severe involvement, it can be a game changing because if we add this vedolizumab to the classical platform with calcineurin inhibitors, microphenat, mofetil, or metotrexat, and ATG also, we have still reductions of the incidence of GI virus disease and it will really improve patients' outcomes. So it's really key. So, so what's next for, for you and for your team? The field is changing quite rapidly. With new platforms coming up, a lot of people are using PostSci with success. It's a nice platform uh, also outside the haploidentical transplant. Even if the event rate is quite low, but if you could reduce serious graft resistance disease even more, it would be nice to see if, you know, can you put this on other prophylaxis platforms as well. So that would be something we'd like to consider to do. Well, thank you both very much indeed for joining us today. We really appreciate it. It's been a real pleasure. Thank you. Thank, thank you for thank having you. us. Thank you so much. Pleasure. Really exciting work there for Ingvar. And looking forward to seeing where the research goes next in this fascinating area. Up next, the Paediatric Blood and Marrow Transplantation Programme at KHCC is a distinguished national, regional and international centre of excellence and referral centre for paediatric blood and marrow transplantation and cellular therapy. The Paediatric Blood and Marrow Transplantation Programme at King Hussein Cancer Centre is the only comprehensive state-of-the-art transplant programme for children in Jordan and the largest in the region. The program works through multidisciplinary teams where the team consists of experts in uh, transplant hospitalists, nurses, nurse coordinators, pharmacists, PharmDs, and all pediatric subspecialties. The program has performed more than 1,300 blood and marrow transplantation since its start in 2004. 
we're hoping for a brighter future and uh, plans are expanding into a children's hospital. We are working on introducing CAR T cell therapy in our program and also we are working on getting the FACT and JC accreditation. We look forward to enhancing our international collaboration and working further with introducing more clinical trials and more robust research. Trainee Day is a key component of every EBMT annual meeting, delivering trainee focused presentations covering a range of useful topics, as well as enabling young specialists to network and collaborate across and beyond the EBMT community. Let's hear from trainees about their experience. I am one of the vice chair of the trainee committee and we are working for the trainee day since uh, last year. We organized this uh, day in order to bring together all trainees from across Europe and beyond and offer uh, a trainee perspective on the most important uh, topics that uh, we think are relevant. Uh, Today. The trainee day are very important because it forces us to collaborate and look at every country differently and try to find solutions so that we can work together. This is actually my first time attending EBMT so it's um, an amazing experience to be able to go in, you can ask questions, really see what's going on. I think it's more engaging being in person as opposed to being online. Um, and yeah, I just think you really benefit being able to network and, and speak with lots of professionals doing the um, same thing as what we do. Being a paediatric hematologist, I'm thrilled at the emphasis that has been placed on trying to bring more paediatric content into these international meetings and also forcing us to work together as paediatricians because it is actually a very separate, very different and very difficult area of transplantation medicine. I'm part of the EBMT trainee committee and there's a lot of people with, with similar visions and uh, it's nice to just share ideas and network uh, with different people across the world. It's been absolutely wonderful to meet people from all over the world and, and to chat and get to know each other. The Maria Letizia Vargas Centre is based just outside Milan, Italy, and was born from an initiative of private individuals. The centre brings together parents, volunteers, and healthcare professionals in an alliance that aims to improve the overall quality of life of children and young people affected by hematologic malignancies and severe diseases. Io sono arrivata al Centro Maria Letizia Verga nel 2019 eh, perché mia figlia Chiara si era ammalata di leucemia nel 2017 che dà la sensazione di essere in un centro in cui eh, i bambini possono continuare ad essere bambini, non solo pazienti. The Comitato Maria Letizia Verga was funded by parents who unfortunately lost their daughter. They build a center fully dedicated to children and adolescents with leukemia and hematological disorders. 1985, the first bone marrow transplant took place. Since then, more than 900 hematopoietic stem cell transplantation were performed. Side by side, we work together with the research lab, the diagnostic lab, the cell factory, and our parents' association for the last 40 years. Now, transplantation is difficult at the best of times, but the situation on the ground in the Ukraine over the past year has put patients and clinical staff at much greater risk. To talk us through how they've worked through the challenges and still managed to provide life-saving treatments, I'm absolutely privileged now to be joined by Bodan Medvedev. Well, first of all, thanks very much indeed for joining us today. Very much appreciate that, thank you. Thank you so much too. It's a big honor for me to be here. Tell us a little bit about your journey. How did you get here? Uh, first of all, it was uh, by train from uh, Kyiv to Warsaw. B border guards uh, even don't have my permission to cross uh, the border. And they just uh, told me that I should go away from, uh, from this train. But uh, finally they found uh, this document and uh, let me go further. 
Uh, then from Warsaw to Paris without any problems, uh, we got here and it, uh, it was okay. Tell us a little bit about what it's been like treating patients uh, this last year in Kyiv. Missiles, a lot of missiles in the sky, a lot of explosions, um, a lot of constant air raids. Um, we were uh, about 15 kilometers far from fighting uh, and um, it was like terrible. We have uh, huge problems with medicine, with blood supply uh, and so on. A lot of donors uh, left uh, our country uh, to, to another countries and for more safe, safety places in Ukraine. We have no donors uh, to use uh, any platelets. Usually we use uh, a a B a B a B O compatibility platelets, but uh, in, in, in that um, period of time we use everything we, we have to. What about staff? How difficult is it for you to keep your staff? Many people uh, lived um, uh, not in, in Kyiv and uh, a lot of our nurses and uh, one of our doctors were under occupation by Russian troops. So we, have, uh, we had also big problems with personnel. Uh, so we lived in hospital. Uh, I even did um, some work, uh, nursing work uh, and technician works. Uh, so that that's was uh, also a problem. Who has the global community helped you at all? Yeah, of course. Uh, global community um, help for Ukrainian hematology patient uh, network was launched, uh, and uh, with with the, the participation of uh, our Minister of Health, with uh, EBMT, uh, WBMT, um, World Health Organization, and so on, and uh, there was. Uh, some necessary for transplant drugs, drugs delivery uh, was created EBMT tumor board to help uh, in difficult cases for our patients. Uh, and also if we have no possibility to, um, to do uh, the best, uh, we just um, take our patients uh, to, to Europe or, um, or America, usually to Europe, uh, so they have the best quality of, um, of treatment. What more could the global community do to help? Uh, for us, uh, the best, the, the, the main problem, I guess, uh, is uh, medicines. So we, we don't uh, have um, medicines for, I would say, for, for example, for FLT3 positive patients. Uh, we have no um, modern uh, TKIs and so on, so we have um, some problems, especially with medicine. So if we, if we will get some me medicines, it will be cool. Uh, yeah. You've come uh, today for the, or part of the reason for the meeting is the EBMT Nuclear Accident uh, Committee. Why is that an important meeting for you? Uh, we don't know what what will be tomorrow, maybe Russian will decide to, to do some nuclear tactical weapons. Um, and uh, we uh, definitely uh, have to make uh, the plan uh, to evacuate people, to, uh, to treat victims. Also, I should uh, uh, tell that uh, we have also a training uh, program in, in this committee, so it I think it will be helpful for me and for whole Ukraine. So my final question is, uh, you've come a long way to come to this meeting. Why come to this meeting? And second is, if you had a message for everybody here, what would it be? Uh, you know, I'm working, uh, I, 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 I've wanted to get on EBMT annual meeting for three years. And uh, I, I did it, now I'm here. So I'm, I'm really enjoy and grateful for, uh, for this meeting. Uh, and uh, the key message for all of uh, participants of this meeting, of all of Europeans, all of uh, American uh, people, uh, they, they help us. And uh, I, I, I would say um, 
thanks for um, for helping us and the willingness to help. It's it's very important for us, uh, and uh, together we're strong. Thank you. Thank you so much too. Before we sign off today, let's look back at some of the highlights for Monday at the 49th annual meeting of the EBMT. EBMT TV highlights, extended interviews and film series are available wherever you're ready to watch, including on screens throughout the venue, online via the annual meeting virtual platform, via the EBMT 2023 meeting app and on YouTube and Twitter. Watch daily for more great content and coverage. That's it from us for today, but make sure to come back tomorrow for our fourth and final episode, where we'll be hosting an in-depth discussion on graft versus host disease, hear all about the JC accreditation program, and bring you all the highlights from the meeting today, including the plenary session on CAR-Ts, paediatric day, and much, much more. We'll see you then. <laughs>